beloved, in the name of the Christ whose birth we celebrate tonight, welcome to our service of worship here at First Presbyterian Fond du Lac. Whether you are here in person, whether you are watching us on Zoom, or if you catch the service several days from now on YouTube. It's all good. We're glad you're here. It is a wonderful time to be together. I have just a, a couple of announcements. Um, there were a lot of cookies brought for the cookie luck. The last I looked, there were a lot of them still there. So we won't turn the lights out exactly at eight o'clock. Feel free to fellowship for a few minutes after the service. Enjoy some of the bounty. I am sure that whatever cookies are left over tonight will be here tomorrow morning also. And I invite you to come to that service tomorrow morning. It is Sunday, the Lord's Day. We will worship God at nine o'clock. For the Growing Connections period afterwards, our time of faith connecting with each other, we're asking people to please bring an ornament from home one that is meaningful to you that you wouldn't mind sharing the story of why that ornament is special. My home didn't do that when I was growing up. You know, we had ornaments that we put on the tree, but it wasn't like this is, we got this when you were born. This is one from your great grandmother or anything like that. So I don't have those stories, but I am bringing something that's important to me now. And if that is your modus operandi, I encourage you to do that as well. Please, please feel free to be a part of it. And please remember that the office, the church office, will be closed on Monday and Tuesday. We will open for normal hours again uh, on Wednesday. At the end of the service, we're going to do the candle lighting. If I have my math correct, I believe this will be my 26th Christmas Eve candlelight service. In all of those services, I have never had anyone catch their hair on fire. Please don't do it to me tonight, okay? Those of you with long hair, please be aware of where your hair is. If there are any around who have problems keeping a candle still, please watch out for them also. And remember when you are lighting your candle, it is the candle that is not yet burning that you turn to light from the lit candle. Otherwise, you have wax all over yourself and all over your nice Christmas clothes. And if worse should come to worse and you do suddenly burst into flames, remember, stop, drop, roll. Okay? Y'all are much more alive than the five o'clock service. Man, alive. Those guys sat there like they were dead. I am glad that you are here and that we're ending this service together. Note, though, that at the end, after the end of singing Silent Night, I didn't spell this out. Somehow it was missed. I will raise my candle and I will say, Jesus Christ, the light of the world. That is your cue to echo me, that Jesus Christ, the light of the world then we will blow out our candles and continue with the service. It's good to be here. It is fun to be together. And I am glad that we are all in this together. But it's also good to remember that it's not just fun and games, is it? And it's not just a dance party. We're here because something special happened. God chose to be like us, to experience human flesh, human aches and pain, human emotions, and eventually human death. Friends, let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship our God who is both divine and very human.
Our Savior, you give sight to the blind and set the prisoners free. Release us from our captivity and show us new life with you. Come and set us free and everlasting life with you. You are the true God who spoke light into darkness and saw that it was good. Bring light into our darkened lives. Come and shine your light. O oh Jesus, you are the redeemer of all people, your creation by your spirit. Help us to find peace and unity from our divided hearts and lands. Tonight we celebrate your birth that unleashes hope, love, peace, and joy into the world from now until the day of your return. Holy One, you have appeared in the flesh. Bring redemption to all. Tonight, we sing a new song, a song of justice, righteousness, and endless peace. Let love be born anew in our hearts on this joyous night.
God came into a broken world, and we know all too well the way it's, it, it is still broken and hurting. Let us confess the state of the world and the state of our souls. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to us all. With Christ's birth comes forgiveness and redemption. Glory to God in the highest. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God in the highest. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. Now that we are at peace with God, let us be at peace with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. I encourage you to take a moment and share God's peace with those around you. Send a text or an emoji to someone who can't be here with us tonight. Well, the peace of Christ. Today's Old Testament lesson comes from the prophet Isaiah in the ninth chapter, verse two and six through seven. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has been shined. For a child has bo been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continuously, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zero of the, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
Our New Testament lesson this evening is, of course, the familiar story, I'm sure, to many of you of Jesus' birth. Uh, before I go into that, there are typically a couple of things that people are curious about. So let me go ahead and try and answer some of those questions now. How old was Mary? Well, obviously, we don't have birth certificates from that time. In this culture, this time, it was generally the practice that you wanted to marry off your girls as soon as they could reasonably bear children. Remember the high infant mortality rates. So it was necessary to keep replenishing the population supply. It was not uncommon to hold back a girl for a year or two to give a greater chance of that first pregnancy coming fully to term and being successful. Now, if you were wealthy, if you were among the upper classes, you might want to keep your daughter back for several years. You would want them at home, in which case they would run the risk of becoming old maids by the time they were about 18 or 19. If you still had a daughter at home who was 18 or 19 years old, watch out for that one, all right? My best guess is Mary is probably about 14. But again, we have no birth certificate. That's my best guess is that Mary is about 14. Where was Jesus born? He is born in a manger because there is no room for them in the inn, the guest house. Maybe it's the spare room. The, the Greek is kind of fuzzy on this. Um, actually, the, the area around Bethlehem, the rock, is very soft. The area is riddled with caves. It was a common place to keep your livestock was you would shepherd them into one of these caves, put some sort of barrier over it, something like that. In the proto Evangelion of James, the apocryphal gospel of James, Jesus is born in a cave. And that's really my best guess, too, is that Jesus was born in a cave that, was com that was, would have been in use as a place to keep the animals very likely to be directly attached to a home or even directly beneath a home. If it is a cave that you enter from the side of the hill, the manger in which Jesus would have been placed, um, again, just the general wood of that area does not allow itself for the, the general mangers that we see in Renaissance and later uh, art. There was a common practice, again, because the, the rock is very soft, to take a large stone and hollow out a place where you could put hay, and it became sort of a feeding trough for the animals, and they would sometimes drill a hole through that rock and tie it to a recalcitrant animal as a way of keeping, of hobbling the animal to keep that animal nearby. So again, my best guess is that this is the type of manger that Luke is referring to, that Jesus probably laid the child in this sort of stone eating trough that would have been filled with hay. And finally, there's the question of the shepherds. We remember King David, Remember, Jesus is of the house and lineage of David. That's why they're going to Bethlehem in the first place. David from Bethlehem had been a shepherd before he was called into royal service in the palace of Saul. Jesus talks about himself as being the good shepherd. And that's significant because it tells us that if Jesus is the good shepherd, there must have been a lot of bad shepherds as well. And in fact, the historical evidence that we have, the, the records from that period indicate that shepherding was about the lowest job you could get. You know, if you couldn't get a job washing dishes at the truck stop, you could get a job being a shepherd. That was about how important or how 
how well that job uh, was looked upon. Put it this way, those of you who had daughters, you would not want your daughter to bring home a shepherd to meet the family. That, that would have been bad indeed, especially if your daughter is 18 or 19. Oh, my gosh. Our scripture lesson this evening comes from Luke chapter 2. I'm reading from the King James Version because some things just need to be read in the King James. And instead of reading from the pulpit on Christmas Eve, I like to come down to the floor of the sanctuary Christ became flesh and came to us. Let the word of God come down to the level of the people. Listen now for God's word. And it came to pass in those days, that is the period of Mary's pregnancy, that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that, while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. My friends, this is the word of God for us this night. Thanks be to God. Let us worship God in song. Jesus, Lord, Glory shine, source of every earthly bliss. 
friends, you may please be seated. If you were fortunate enough to come of age in the mid to late 1970s, even perhaps the early 80s, it was a good time to be young. Polyester leisure suits. Some of us look good in leisure suits. Remember Farrah Fawcett hair? Mm, yes. And disco. Disco music. Donna Summer, the Bee Gees, the Village People, KC and the Sunshine Band. Good times, good music. One of those joys of those days was going to a disco. The blast of sound as you walk in, the, the mirror ball sparkling, and colored lights flying around the dance floor. Some of my best memories are those colored lights. Of course, they were just regular lights, but you know they had colored pieces of paper colored pieces of plastic over them for these different colored lenses, blue and orange and green and yellow and red and purple, you name it. Dancing at a disco was like being in a box full of neon crayons. There were just colors everywhere. The one thing you didn't want, though, besides tripping over yourself, the one thing you didn't want was being there at the end of the night because that's when all of the regular lights came on and that's when you saw the place as it really was tiny cramped dirty but when the music was loud and those colored lights were flashing and swooshing it was pretty cool pretty cool what does that have to do with anything? Well, I'll tell you. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. What does that mean? How, how does that apply to us? We have light. We have the sun, the moon, the stars. We have street lights. We have flashlights. We can see where we're going, right? We can see clearly. We can see things as they are. Or do we? Say we drive by broken breath about 1, 2 o'clock on a Friday afternoon. And there's a long line of people there waiting for food. What do we see? Well, it depends on the lens we're looking for it. It depends on the light. When we see that long line of people, do we see idle layabouts who need to get a job? Yes. If we're looking through the lens of culture, if we're looking at them through the colored lenses that condemn everyone at the bottom of society as misfits and failures, then yes, that's what we see. But if we're looking at that line of people through the clear light shining from our wonderful counselor, what we'll see are children of God who need compassion and direction. What we see depends on the light. Let's say we're driving across America. We're taking a road trip, Route 66. We're driving across America. We're admiring the countryside. What do we see? Wetlands that could be drained and developed? Old growth forests ripe for harvesting? endangered species holding up progress, 
underground oil ready for fracking? Yes. If we view nature through the lens of something to be exploited and squeezed dry, but if we look at our country through the clear light of our mighty God, then we'll see a great opportunity for stewardship of all those natural resources, all these gifts from God. What we see depends on the light. Think of the angel tree presents that we collected and blessed this last Sunday. Many of you were there and you joined me in the fellowship hall, laying hands on those presents and blessing them. When we imagine those people receiving their gifts, when we imagine them gathered around in their family units or however they live, and, and we see them opening their presence, what kind of people do we see? What do we envision? It all depends on the limb. They aren't like us. Very different. It's not like no one we actually know. That's what we see by looking through our lens of a secure home and food certainty and a stable income. But if we're looking at them through the clear light shining from our everlasting Father, we're seeing sisters and brothers who need our help. What we see depends on the light. We watch the nightly news for an update on the war in Europe. Do we see an evil aggressor who needs to be punished? Another European country sucking us dry? A war so far away and so removed from us, we don't care who wins or loses. Perhaps, depending on which news channel you're watching. But if we're watching that war through the clear light of the Prince of Peace, we see children of God who are hurting on both sides. What we see depends on the light. When we look at our world, when we look at other people, when we look at the environment through the lenses of culture, bias, greed, what's in it for me, we don't see clearly. To borrow a line from St. Paul, we're seeing through a glass darkly. But looking at the world through the light of our wonderful counsel, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, we see clearly. We see what we are meant to be. When we look at life through the lens of Jesus, we see the world differently. We see ourselves differently. We see ourselves as we are and as we are meant to be. The shepherds are out in the field. They have a marvelous experience with the angels and the heavenly host. And now they have this burning desire to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass. What are you guys, crazy? Come on, no one leaves the field in the middle of the night. Leave those sheep alone by themselves. My goodness, wild animals, robbers, sheep wandering off. You missing the path in the dark and getting lost? These fellows have no flashlights. There are no street lamps. There are no, there's the moon, the stars, and a stick of wood you pull out of the fire. And that's not going to last very long. That's it. Fellas, wait. Wait until daylight. But the shepherds have been face-to-face -face with the angels. 
And the glory of the Lord shone around them. And now they see the world differently. They see with a clear light, light from a Savior. They follow the light and go with haste. And when they have seen the miracle, they return, glorifying and praising God. They used to walk in darkness, but now, now they have seen the great light, a light that flows from the source of justice and righteousness. Discos were great. I got to tell you, they were. And maybe someday they'll make a comeback. Why not? 80s music is. Why can't disco make a comeback too? But you know, the world is not a dance party. Viewing ourselves and the world through colored lenses of tradition, culture, television, politics, and greed, we'll never see the world as it really is. We need to look at the world and ourselves as we are, as we are meant to be. We need to look at life through the clear light of the justice and righteousness of our wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Beloved, may we see the world and our place in it through the light of the world, our Savior, Christ the Lord. Amen.
Thank you, Ann Bell. That is one of my great joys, is listening to our Ann Bell play. Joyfully now, let us come to God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious, holy, loving God, joyfully, joyfully tonight, we come to you because we know that we have seen the angel. We have heard the heavenly host. We have seen our risen Lord, the light of the world. But Lord, in the midst of our great joy, we must necessarily remember those who do not know this. For those who are living this light in a haze of fog and darkness. And so, Lord, we lift up all those who have found that joy has fled tonight. Those who will go to bed hungry tonight and very possibly tomorrow as well. We pray, Lord, that your peace will be there to sustain them and that we will work extra hard with our own generosity and goodwill and fortitude that they may sleep well. We pray for those who live afraid of violence, whether from wars far away, drive-by violence in our own neighborhoods, domestic violence under our own roofs. God, for those who feel no joy tonight because of fear, and violence. We ask that you will please be their Prince of Peace and help us to bring peace to their world. And for those who come tonight in sorrow, those whose hearts are breaking, whether it is the recent pain of a few minutes or a few days ago, or whether it is the remembered anguish of years past and this time of year brings that sorrow fresh to hearts and minds. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will be their wonderful counselor and that in your light they will see clearly the love that you have for them and so they may be at peace. And God, we pray again for ourselves. For we know that, yes, we look happy on the outside, but we know that the outside does not always match the inside. And for those we know, those who are nearby, those that we seem to think of as always doing well, who are walking in a clear, lit, Path, never stumbling. We pray for them too, that their outsides may match their insides. And God, we pray for ourselves. We pray for ourselves this evening that we will not take your light for granted, that we will not always assume that. Because we know you, we are looking at the world through your clear light. For lenses are deceptive, Lord. We think we are seeing things clearly. When in fact, we are looking through a fog, a haze, a glass darkly. We pray, Lord, that we will see clearly. So that we may clearly live and live well the way that Jesus himself taught us when he taught us how to pray by saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Um, 
Friends, joyfully we have received the birth of our Lord. Let us now share joyfully what God has so freely, generously, and joyfully shared with us. We receive our tithes and our offerings. Mm -hmm. Great God, we do not have frankincense, gold, or myrrh. Perhaps our gifts are not really suitable for a king, but we bring them with great joy because we know that you will use them to lighten up the world and let all people see that there was a way to live that does not involve eternal darkness but rather your awesome, joyful light. Bless this offering, Lord. In the name of Christ and his holiness, we pray. Amen.
If you will re please remain standing, and those who are assisting me with the lighting, if they would please come forward. God said, let there be light. And behold, there was light. And God divided the day from the light, and he called the darkness night and the day light, and it was good. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the light of the world. Those who come to the Father come by me. Please, share God's life. Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Jesus Christ, the light of the world.
My friends, please remember, take the candles out with you so that we don't have to go out and find them later. Please remember that there is worship tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. We invite everyone here to be there then. Take a moment, please, on your way out to thank the staff. We've had three bulletins this week instead of one. Thank our AV and sound wonderful people, our handbells, Chris has learned something over 30 pieces of music for just these two days, for just these three services. These things don't just happen on their own. So please, friends, now I charge you to go forth into the world, seeing clearly, seeing clearly through the beautiful light of the light of the world, and let all people see how much God loves us. And as you do so, friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord God lift his countenance to you and grant you God's own peace this day and forevermore. And so let all God's people say, Alleluia. Amen.